Hi everybody. So it is Sunday morning in Tokyo. Uh, I'm about to leave the hotel to move on to Osaka. And uh, you know, when I first arrived in Japan, um, I posted a picture of my closet, the stuff that I brought to, Os uh, to Tokyo, well, to the Japan trip. And people were shocked that I could fit this much stuff in a suitcase. So much so that they actually didn't really believe me. Um, so today I'm going to do a video on how I pack. Uh, so everything you see here, plus uh, the various bits and bobs in the drawers, plus my laundry under there, um, plus these four pairs of shoes. I'm going to wear the white sneakers around today, so these four pairs of shoes. Uh, I, I do actually fit in this Ramoa. So this is not the largest size Ramoa. It's actually, I think, one or two levels down from the largest size. And what I realized is that the great thing about this size is that if you fully, fully pack it in, at the density that I, for instance, normally pack stuff with, you will still be right at the weight limit for most airlines. Well, for all airlines I've ever encountered. Um, so don't buy the biggest Ramoa. Buy the slightly smaller one for that reason. Um, also, some people are like, hey, you're cheating though. You got another Ramoa. I do have another Ramoa. That's right. I have this one. So this is my carry-on size. And actually, because uh, I knew I was going to a lot of meetings in Tokyo, I wanted to have a briefcase, not a tote. So I packed... I actually packed my briefcase in that along with my overcoat. So that's basically what this carry-on is for. Briefcase, overcoat, and any last minute shopping I might do. But actually my, the stuff that I wear day to day fits in here. All right, let's get started. So what I always start with is trousers. Um, you see the suitcase here, right? It's got two rails here for where the luggage handles extend from. So I always put my trousers on this side because the trousers are what are gonna fold the flattest. Um, and so I'll also separate the trousers out of the suits, for instance. There's nothing really that complicated about putting the trousers in, just fold it in half. I don't know how interesting this is gonna be watching me fold trousers in half, but maybe this can be one of those ASMR things. Um, one thing to keep in mind is when you are folding the trousers and putting them in the suitcase, uh, do each one uh, like alternate sides, right? Because the waistband and the cuffs are going to be the thickest part. So you want to alternate the sides um, just to get them a little bit more densely packed like that. Actually, I just realized one thing. That tobacco linen suit, I was meant to drop it off with Taylor Cade for alterations, and I forgot. So I will have to figure that out a bit later. Man, I haven't had time to do kind of maintenance pressing. So some of these are like a little, a little bit more wrinkly than I would like. Okay, I also lost track of how much stuff I brought. So I've put in so far two pairs of suit trousers, two pairs of odd trousers. You know, when I travel, I always regret it when I forget to bring a pair of suspenders. So I always bring suspenders because, you know, sometimes like your weight fluctuates a little bit on a long trip and you might be your pants might be a little too loose or a little too tight. In my case, usually a little too tight, but it just so happens in this case, this pair of trousers was a little bit too loose, so it was perfect to have those suspenders. Oh, yeah. I think the key to all of this is that when you unpack everything, get it all hung up as soon as you can, and, um, and a lot of the wrinkles will just naturally fall out. And then where you do have wrinkles, try and make it in a place that's relatively easy to iron, right? Like that's always been, been my secret for when it comes to packing jackets. I will show you that in a second. Okay, that's okay, that's okay. Wait. All right, 
this trouser's done. After trousers, I usually do jackets. Um, so with jackets, what I do is, it's really not that hard. Some people like to do this, where they stuff it into the thing, or like where they stuff one shoulder into the other shoulder, like this. Um, I never really saw the point, to be honest. I was always happy to just do this. So I take the jacket, right, and I'm a size 48, so my body is a little bit narrower than this suitcase. This, this might not work for larger people than me, and I will just fold it in half, like that. And then I'll take the sleeves, and I'll fold it this way. And, you know, I would just now I was mentioning, like, just, if you're gonna, you're gonna have this stuff wrinkled anyways, but at least put the wrinkles in places that are easy to manage. So in a case like this, right, the wrinkle is really gonna form on the back here. Sometimes that will shake out, sometimes it won't. Um, but at least if you have a, just an iron, you can touch that up in 10 seconds and it's easy. And then when you have wrinkles on the elbows of a suit, it's not nearly as noticeable because people kind of expect you to have wrinkles on the elbows of your suit anyways. Okay, this next. I could say something really anal like, I only pack in a color-coded way and I start with blues and I go to light colors, but that's insane, I don't do that. And I just take that over like that. And bear in mind, like, this is how I packed all my stuff when I came here. So if you watched our videos and you were like, oh my God, Mark's stuff looks so wrinkly, then probably I'm doing a bad job with this. But if you thought, oh, he looks okay, you know, then I guess maybe my method works. Dookie. This is one of my favorite double breasted. This is a Chichio double breasted in a wool mohair. And I, I love it, but it is getting to a point where it's just, just a little bit too tight for me. I'm almost 40, so I guess these things happen. I will have to remake this at some point. I did a bad job there. Um, do you need to button these jackets before you put them in? Eh, you can. I never do. You don't have to. All right. So that's jacket and pants mostly done. Um, as you can see, there's actually still quite a lot of space left. Like this stuff is puffy, right? If I was to compress, I can still put a lot more in. So uh, let's keep going. Uh, I found an extra sport coat and pair of trousers I forgot in the closet, so those are in there now as well. Um, next, we're moving on to shoes. So the shoes, what I do is I, I fit them in the corner. Uh, and ideally, I would travel with just four pairs of shoes, because then obviously, you know, you have eight corners, that, that works perfectly. But this time, foolishly, I'm not quite sure why, I brought five pairs of shoes. Um, but still, you can kind of finagle them in somehow. When you're putting them in, uh, let me show you, like... So a pair like this, for instance, right? Black Dwayne loafers. Um, I tend to put it so that the curved side is facing downwards and the, and the straight side is facing upwards. The reason is because you're nestling it between the clothes. Uh, and when you finally close it, you, if you have like these flat edges closing against each other, it just fits a little bit better. Um, I know that sounds super, super anal, but uh, I think it works. Sam, you might have to get a little closer to show how this is done. Like, point into the bag. See, so, so I'm placing it like that in there. And then this goes in this way. One more pair here.
so I've got two pairs left over, right? Um, so what I do with the two pairs is I will put that, slide them at the top and bottom here. In fact, let me, yeah, these are my suede ones. I'm gonna move the suede ones. Uh, so these ones are double monks. These are Koji double monks and they're with a shoe tree as well. So given that they're a little harder, I'll put them in a slightly easier spot. So I've got one there, one there, and so, and then these last two can fit one here. And I should be able to just about get that in. Cool. All right, and then now next, like just kind of little miscellaneous items go in next. So now we're just putting in a few more casual things. I actually probably went overboard on the casual chinos because I've barely, barely worn them and yet I've brought a lot. It's just, I really like these sport chinos, you know, and it was a little hard to tell what the weather in Japan would be like. You know, May can get really cool, but it can also be really hot. And actually, I would say this trip has probably been more hot than cool. It's also been extremely kind of muggy. All right. Now, this is why I like safari jackets, right? Because safari jackets basically, they fold down really well. Um, and they're appropriate for a lot of different occasions. Uh, actually, now that I think about it, I didn't pack this one in that suitcase. I carried this. Let me set this one aside for now. This City Hunter, it hasn't been sunny enough to really break out this City Hunter, so I feel like this probably was not necessary to pack the Tokyo, but I'm going to New York next, so it is, it is good to have it around. Now this stuff I, I do tend to button up. Unlike my tailored stuff, I do tend to button up like our Armory's daywear stuff. Um, so stuff like City Hunter, 3PB, uh, Road Jacket, Safari 2. And the reason for that is because they're, they're much more like overshirts. Um, so I think it's better, to, they're floppier. And so I would just fold them like I would fold a shirt. I used, I veiled myself of hotel laundry. And so that does simplify my packing on the way out a little bit because it's just a few less shirts to have to mess with. Um, you remember when I mentioned I have like that briefcase in my other bag? So I traveled with that briefcase empty when I came. And what I did was I stuffed a few pieces of like knitwear and stuff in there. So that actually gave me a little bit of extra capacity. I actually only just remembered that. Um, let's start with this. And as for shirts, two. surprisingly, I actually didn't quite bring enough shirts this time. I really could have brought a few more. But Packing is always a little bit of a fly-by-night sort of thing. You know what? I should take these little bits out, though. So, for sure, the shirts are going to get a little bit wrinkled. Um, but, you know, that's life, right? You can touch them up a little bit at your destination. like I'm missing a shirt. I don't want to put it. For folding shirts, I don't do anything particularly special or complicated. Um, usually, like an idiot, I've left my pack until the very last minute, like I have today. And so, good enough is good enough. I was excited to bring these shirts this trip though, because I 
had a couple made at Ascot Chang. So these are, are actually fresh shirts for me, which I was really excited to have with me. Although one downside of bringing like newly made stuff on a trip with you is you might not necessarily have thought about how it's gonna fit together as a wardrobe. And like for instance, this green shirt has been a little bit more challenging to style than I expected. Cause it doesn't sit, doesn't sit super well with uh, the jackets that I brought with the exception of like one or two of them. All right, so this knitwear I put in that briefcase. Uh, and then when it comes to like small items, underwear, socks, and that sort of thing, uh, what I do is I just roll it up tight as I can and then I just stuff it into whatever gaps I have, right? So like one of the really major gaps is like up here, like that. see the sorry state of some of my socks. It's time for an upgrade. Actually, if you're in Japan, uh, it's such, such, such a pleasure to go to Tabio. Um, we sell Tabio socks at the store and I just swear by them. I think they're awesome. Uh, I brought a combination of cotton Tabio socks and uh, cotton silk Tabio socks in case it got warm. And they always serve me well. I also brought one pair of black socks. This is something I forget a lot, but every once in a while when I'm wearing certain suits, like I like to have black and it's not a color I use that often. So I have to like remind myself to bring it. There we go, some more there. There's always gaps top and bottom like that. And it's also a little bit of a gap like here in the sides between like the tips of the shoes. Um, if you're wondering like all my sizes, so I wear a 48 for the jacket and I wear 15 and a half for a shirt and I wear um, size eight UK for shoes. Okay, I think we're getting there. I've got neckties and toiletries and my belts, and that should be about it. Okay, oops. Close it out. So, um, toiletries. Wow. Toiletries would go here. It's just about finding little gaps, you know. would go here. I could have sworn I had like another shirt. Hmm. Well, um, told you to go there. And then the last thing is neckties. So for neckties, uh, you know, neckties you have to be really careful about because if you crease a necktie, it's such, such, such a pain to uncrease it. I, I really hate trying to iron my neckties. Neckties are really not designed to be pressed except when they're made. Uh, so I do my best to just fold them in half, right? And you kind of, because if you have a crease, you just want to hear, you want to know where else, right? So I do that. And then this is what's good about the remote. You got this cover thing. So that kind of helps to anchor everything. Got the cover there. And then you Velcro that down that and you feel around a little bit and see like where you got a little more space because you might have to kind of rejig a few things and then there's that not tight okay moment of truth There you go. Um, it's actually still got a teeny bit more space. So I gotta, I'm gonna see 
so I can fit a little bit of the knitwear in there and then just consolidates my packing a little bit. But yeah, I was kind of nervous about this, like whether I could do it on camera. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, that is basically how I pack my suitcase when I'm traveling. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave in the comments. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.